So now that we've taken a look at what tools that we have available, now we have our property inspector down at the bottom of our screen. So if you're used to using Photoshop and Illustrator, you're used to a control panel, or some people like to call it an option panel, at the very top of their screen below their menus. Fireworks uses a property inspector just like Dreamweaver. So whatever I have chosen on my screen is going to be in my properties down there. I'm going to see the options for that particular tool. So for at the moment, I don't have anything selected except for just my selection tool, and I've just kind of clicked out onto my document. So I see that I have my canvas, and so I could change my canvas color if I wanted to. And I'll turn that back to white at the moment, and I can take that even all the way to absolutely nothing whatsoever. I've got my canvas size and where I'm going to maybe get rid of a size or increase a size from the area, and is it going to be for that current page only? That's actually pretty important that we make sure and always kind of look at that particular area, especially once we get several pages because each page can have its own size, we want to make sure that when we change the size of it, we're not changing all of the pages at a time. So now I have a couple objects chosen here. I've got my bitmap, and so that I see indeed it is a bitmap, I'm able to change the size of it over here, or I can click on my scale tool and change the size of it. You'll notice that with the scale tool, it really is just a scale tool. I don't have to hold down my shift key to be able to change that proportionately. And I can change the opacity and give it a filter, and we'll take a look at the filters later. So it really just depends on what I have selected as to what properties are going to show up in my property inspector. Now, if we take a look at our preferences, and on the Mac, it's going to be underneath my fireworks menu and preferences, and on the PC it's going to be underneath your edit menu. Or for those of you who are used to the older Macromedia products, it's just command or control U. So in my general category, I can either show that start page or not. I absolutely want to make sure that it's checked to scale my strokes and effects, and here are my undo steps. So just like Photoshop, I have 20 levels of undo. So how do I want to save my files? Do I want to add that preview icon to it? And do I want to save my page thumbnails? In my workspace, do I want to auto-collapse my icon panels or open new documents as tabs? Those tabs may be new to some of you. It's very handy to have that pop open in tabs, so I highly recommend that. And then I've got some default colors for my stroke and my highlight and my zoom. Under my edit category, I can have my options for deleting objects when cropping, whether I want to see my precise cursors or not, show solid points with my pen tool, and how much of a distance that I want to have a snap. I've got some options for my nine slice scale. We will talk about that more when we get to nine slice scaling. My grids and my guide colors and my snap distance my default letting for when I have a paragraph, and my default font. How I want my Photoshop import. Do I want to share layers between states? Do I want to flatten file? And this is really just my preferences for a default. We can always change those when we bring those in as well. Clipping masks, layer effects, and when I launch an edit from an external application, do I want to always use my original source or never or just ask when launching, which is not a bad thing to choose. If I have any Photoshop plugins, textures, or patterns, I can browse for those as well. And there's lots of patterns out there, so being able to bring in your own is great. So that's our preferences and that's our properties inspector. And now we'll move on to rulers and guides next.